It is estimated that about 75% of adults in the world use either glasses or contact lenses. There is a good chance you either are or may become one of them. Why do people experience vision problems such as nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism? Well, it has to do with the structure of the eye. Here is a diagram of the eye. It consists of many structures. The most important ones are the cornea, pupil, iris, lens, retina, and the fovea. The cornea is the clear outer layer that acts as a protective covering and bends light. The pupil is the black dot in the middle of our eyes. It is a hole that allows light to travel into the eyeball. The iris is the colored area of the eye around the pupil. It controls the size of the pupil, thus controlling how much light can enter. The color of the iris varies. It can be blue, green, brown, or a mixture. When we talk about eye color, we are referring to the iris. Right behind the iris lies the lens. The lens can change shape with the help of its surrounding muscles. By changing shape, the lens refracts, meaning redirecting or bending the light rays, helping it to reach the retina. The retina is the innermost layer of the eye. It contains cells that can detect light. These cells then transmit the signal through the optic nerve to the brain, thus allowing us to see. In normal vision, light rays are first bent by the cornea, traveling through the opening known as the pupil, where the rays are then bent again by the lens so that they will come together and reach a focal point directly on the retina. Myopia, also known as nearsightedness, occurs when the cornea of your eye is too curved or the eyeball is too long. Light that enters the eye is bent too intensely and it cannot reach the retina. Thus, faraway objects tend to focus in front of the retina instead of on it. With regards to hyperopia or farsightedness, the opposite problem exists. The eye is too short. In this case, the light is bent not enough, causing close objects to focus behind the retina. Astigmatism occurs when either the shape of the eye is not a perfect sphere, but rather shaped like a football, or if the cornea or lens has mismatched curvature, thus making it difficult for images to be sharply focused anywhere in the eye. Any one of these conditions will result in blurry vision. Is there a way to surgically correct for these conditions? Yes, through LASIK. So what exactly is LASIK? The abbreviation LASIK stands for Laser in Situ Keratomiliosis, and it is the most popular type of refractive surgery techniques used to correct any of the three previously mentioned conditions. Right now, you may be wondering who is eligible to receive this procedure. You may even be thinking about undergoing the surgery yourself. Typically, adults whose eyeglasses prescription has not changed in the past year may be considered for LASIK, and it's recommended that individuals undergoing LASIK are between 25 to 40 years old. People who experience slow healing process have inherently thin or oddly shaped corneas, experience frequent infections, swelling, or ulcers in the eye, people with dry eyes, and those that are pregnant or under 18 years of age are considered non-ideal candidates for LASIK. LASIK is performed by a trained ophthalmologist. First, a thin flap is cut from the front of the eye. Then, a laser is employed to burn away tiny amounts of tissue within the eye in a particular pattern. Finally, the flap is replaced and put back in place. The entire process takes roughly 10 minutes per eye. After the procedure, patients need to apply anti-inflammatory eye drops for a couple of weeks. Additional eye drops are given to keep the eyes moisturized. Similarly, patients are told to protect their eyes from bright lights. Sometimes, goggles are also given to pre prevent rubbing of the eyes while sleeping. Finally, some patients are given a bandage contact lens to accelerate the healing process. The bandage is typically removed after three to four days. 
While there are a limited amount of high quality studies tracking long-term outcomes, complications, or stability for LASIK procedures, there is a general agreement that more than 90% of appropriately selected patients achieve excellent results. No surgeries come without the possibility of complications and side effects. LASIK is no exception. One side effect is minor bleeding within the eye as a result of the suction used to keep the eye still during surgery. This side effect is not serious and will disappear on its own after a few days. Dry eyes is another temporary complication. However, some patients have reported long-term dry eyes. Additionally, patients have reported seeing halos around bright lights in the dark. This is caused by distortion of the replaced flap. This complication is rare, with only 5% of, exp of patients experiencing it. Flap complications, such as folding, rarely occur, with an occurrence of only 0.24%. This number lowers if the ophthalmologist is experienced with performing LASIK. Finally, the flap may detach from the eye after the operation. However, with proper post-surgical care, this would not occur. When compared to other types of refractive surgeries, LASIK demonstrates similar effectiveness with better recovery. A 2015 study followed patients who had undergone either LASIK or another type of refractive surgery, photorefractive keratectomy, abbreviated PRK, for a year to observe the side effect of dry eyes. They found that 5% of the patients who received PRK developed chronic dry eyes, whereas only 0.8% of the patients with LASIK develop the same. LASIK effectiveness is improving due to technological advancements. A study done in 2015 examined 97 published articles representing over 60,000 eyes that underwent LASIK to study surgical outcomes. It was found that overall, the more recent techniques had better outcomes than the earlier ones. Many of the examined articles indicated for that for the most part, dry eyes were gone six months after surgery. If you are considering LASIK surgery, please speak to an optometrist or family physician to help you make an informed decision by exploring your values, preferences, expectations, and tolerance of uncertainty and risk. Thank you for listening.